This is the Best Stocks to Buy podcast. Looking for quality stock tips? Well, we bring you timely investment ideas based on the latest stock and market outlooks. Our ideas are driven by a proprietary software that reviews, analyzes, and ranks for 6,000 stocks every week. So you may hear the name of a company you haven't heard of before. And you know what? That is often the best kind of opportunity, an opportunity to get in early before the investing masses. The Best Stocks to Buy podcast is made possible by Kind of Management Group, a registered investment management firm serving individuals, business owners, and family offices. Hi, everyone. This is Matt Scano with Kind of Management Group, and this is the Best Stocks to Buy podcast. Today is January 31st, 2017. And here on the opening slide this week, we're going to review the best dividend stock to buy right now. Our next slide is called the Setup and the Approach. And the key objective of this podcast is to find and present to you a high probability upside potential stock. And the key tool we use is a financial model, a proprietary tool we use that we developed to, that uh, uses multiple valuation approaches across 6,000 stocks every week. So the view you're getting is not driven by some sensational headline and some publication focused on increasing readership, but based simply on the best investment opportunity we could find for you. Now, an easy way of thinking about our approach is to think about the method of triangulation that law enforcement uses to locate a cell phone. In our case, we use a form of triangulation to locate a future stock price using different valuation methods. Now, the trying to do something like this we viewed as daunting, but uh, I believed I was well prepared for the challenge. I have both computer programming experience as an engineer and over $15 billion of transaction experience as a Wall Street guy and business development guy to judge the research that I reviewed. So my approach didn't come overnight. I painstakingly reviewed over 40 years of white papers, taking away the best that each had to offer, then added some of my own tested intuition to implement new data sets that weren't even available as little as 10 years ago. Uh, furthermore, uh, my model uses both historical and projected values and takes into account management's historical accuracy of meeting the projections that they share with the public. A uh, point worth remembering is that these views are based on today, uh, an unforeseen uh, economic report, a regional conflict, a revised policy can change these expectations tomorrow. And the benefit of using a professional money manager, like Kind of Manager Group, is having someone experienced in making educated assessments about the uncontrollable and the unpredictable. Um, so, what did we find for you this week? The best dividend stock to buy right now, we found it to be in the office equipment and supplies industry. Uh, on to our industry overview slide. Uh, the office equipment and supplies industry is comprised of a diverse group of companies serving the retail and wholesale needs of consumers and businesses of all types. Uh, here are the 10 largest competitors by sales, just to kind of level set. Uh, we start off with Staples, followed by Xerox. Office Depot, uh, Ascendant, uh, formerly uh, United Stationers, I believe, uh, Pitney Bowes, those are the first five. Uh, the next five are D. Bull, Nixdorf, uh, Ico Brands, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, Knoll Incorporated, uh, Electronics for Imaging, and Ennis Incorporated. So those are the 10 largest competitors by sales in this industry. Now, the growth drivers uh, are pretty uh, straightforward. The industry is facing some challenges, but the companies that are holding on and doing well, their growth drivers are basically strength and long-term service arrangements with mid-size and large, larger size uh, customers. Uh, the industry challenges are not necessarily unique, but uh, the office equipment distributors are being hurt by online competitors, and additionally, there have been few uh, technological advances uh, in the industry. And on to the next slide. The best dividend stock to buy right now we found to be Staples Incorporated. 
Uh, their ticker symbol is SPLS. Uh, we see the company is having a six-month upside potential of 15%. On to the quick fact slide. Staples is one of the largest office supply superstore chains in the United States. It operated 1,900 leased stores in North America, Europe, Asia, and South America as of January 2016, and they sell Staples branded products in over 2,400 grocery stores, mainly Safeway, uh, in the United States. Uh, the sales mix in 2015 were office supplies and services, 74%, business machines, 14%, Computers, 6%, and furniture, 6%. Uh, their website is www.staples.com. Uh, the company is headquartered in Farmingham, Massachusetts. They were founded in 1985, and they have 79,075 employees. On to the metric slide. Uh, the annual revenue for Staples over the last 12 months was $20.2 billion dollars, their net income was $580 million, and their cash from operations was $905 million. Definitely a sizable company. Uh, the operating margins for 2016 uh, were tracking to be 7%, and for 2017, they're also expected to be 7%. Uh, on to the valuation metrics. The trailing P.E. ratio for Staples right now stands at 10.3, and the forward P.E. ratio stands at 9.8. And that relationship means that on average, uh, the analysts expect earnings to increase next year. Uh, the peg ratio stands at 2.3. Uh, you know, something less than one is usually ideal, but we think that this is okay in this case. Uh, the price to sales ratio uh, stands at 0 0.3. The price to book ratio is at 1.3, and the enterprise value to EBITDA ratio stands at 4.4. Now, one thing that makes this company very attractive is its dividend yield. Right now, Staples has a dividend of 5.2%. Uh, the average dividend payout ratio uh, for Staples over the last three years has been 49%. That means they, on average, pay out 49% of their earnings as a dividend. On to the price chart for Staples. Um, what you would notice if you look at the price chart for Staples is that 2016 was a very volatile year uh, price-wise for the Staples stock. Uh, the stock started around you know eight eight dollars and fifty cents, and it ended up where it is right now around you know, nine nine dollars and fifteen cents or, or, or so. But the stock was as high as eleven dollars in that range and as low as around seven dollars uh during this past year and part of the reason for that volatility was that there was a lot of hope that staples would merge with office max there was an attempted merger but it was denied uh regulatory approval in may 2016 and that brought the stock down from the eleven dollar range to the seven dollar uh, range uh, during the year. So there was definitely a lot of volatility, but the stock is up about 6 to 7% uh, for the year. On to the next slide, we call it the looking back, the looking forward. So looking back, uh, sales have declined about 4% uh, over the past year. Uh, the Staples business model is suffering uh, due to uh, declining customer traffic as a result of online and digital sales, uh, the company closed 50 stores in North America in 2016, and the company's proposed merger with Office Max, as I just mentioned, was denied by the Federal Trade Commission in May 2016. So the stock has been very volatile throughout 2016. Uh, you know, the stock is up about 7% from a year ago. However, uh, it has experienced, you know, a lot of volatility, higher highs and lower lows. So, what makes this attractive? <laughs> Looking forward, uh, now this now annual 2017 sales are projected to decline six percent, but its earnings are projected to increase six percent going forward. 
and we expect there to be some synergies and cost savings as a result of the stores that have been closed uh, in 2016. Uh, furthermore, Staple plans to reduce its European operations and complete sale of a significant controlling stake of its European operations. It's selling uh, most of its European operations to a private uh, equity firm called Cerebus Capital, and that's expected to close during the first quarter of 2017. Uh, additionally, Staples plans to focus its North American business on a higher margin, mid-sized customers, which presently uh, makes up 39% of its sales, and these type of customers also provide better long-term growth opportunities. So we expect the stock's volatility to subside somewhat in 2017, and we believe 2016 has created a, a caution among investors, and Staples personally has a very attractive valuation against its historic norms. On to the next slide, the why now, the bull rationale. Well, you, you may wonder, you know, why would I be interested in a stock with the sales uh, declining? Well, basically, the, it's all about valuation. Uh, the, the stock is cheap right now, and it's expected to be cheap in the near future. And although sales are declining and are projected to decline for 2017, earnings are expected to increase for 2017. So at the end of the day, we, we just believe that the market has uh, overreacted to the negativity of the merger not going through with, with office backs, and the company is very attractive in terms of valuation. On to the summary slide. The financial statement quality of staples is good. Uh, the operating margin trend is flat. The price pattern trend we also consider to be flat, but it, it has been volatile. And the industry outlook is flat uh, as well. Uh, a lot of these brick and mortar office equipment stores are complete competing with a lot of online sales. And the overall market outlook, we're considering it to be flat. Uh, the fourth quarter uh, GDP came in uh, significantly lower than expected at 1.9% versus 3.5% for the prior quarter. So there is definitely some caution right now on the direction of the stock market. Uh, the recent closing price for Staples was $9.20, and our six-month price target is $10.58. And this gives the stock a six-month upside potential of 15%. Plus, it pays a very healthy dividend of over 5%. And it is for all these reasons that we believe that Staples is the best dividend stock to buy right now. We hope you found this presentation helpful. We'll talk to you again soon. Hello, everyone. This broadcast was made by Connor Management Group. We are a registered investment advisor and money manager for individuals, businesses, and family offices. We are not your typical financial advisor in that we invest our clients' funds directly into individual stock positions. We do not put our clients into other stock mutual funds. At Kind of Management Group, we help you grow and protect your assets. We craft high growth investment portfolios for your children and other minors. We manage the rolled over assets from 401k accounts. We manage IRA and trust accounts. So how do we go about serving our clients? One big differentiator is that we develop some pretty comprehensive computer software that reviews, analyzes, and ranks over 6,000 stocks on a weekly basis. And from that, we create concentrated investment portfolios of well-researched and closely watched stocks. Furthermore, we operate under a managed account arrangement. And that means you open and fund a brokerage account in your name, and we simply manage your investments electronically. That gives you, our client, the greatest control and transparency possible. You can learn more about our service at www.connermg.com. Additionally, we've set up a group on the LinkedIn platform. The name of our group is simply called Stock Investing Tips, Better Returns, Bigger Pockets. Now, this is a private group, which means you have to click the Yes to Join link. We do this because we want to be able to control the quality of the member experience. So if you like what you heard and you would like to receive more timely investment information and be able to post questions, just send me a message to ask to join our LinkedIn group. 
you really find my profile on LinkedIn. It's Mathis Connor. That's M-A-T-H-I-S-C-O-N-N-E-R. And if you have any problems connecting, just send me an email at Mathis at ConnorMG.com. Well, that's all for now. And I'll talk to you in our next broadcast or hopefully with you in our LinkedIn group. All right, everyone. Have a great week.